Sometimes in life, things are not what they seem to be. Because it says it's the Italian scene, but to me, today, it's the Austrian-German scene. And with that being said, hallo zusammen and welcome to another video of me analyzing German for you guys wanting to learn German or just being interested in the German language and culture and how it works and everything. And today, once again, we're gonna take a closer look at Inglorious Bastards and especially Hans Lander. He's the main antagonist, the villain of the movie, a Nazi from Austria, but right now, right here, he is in Paris in order to take part in a movie premiere. So today we're gonna take a closer look at Christoph Waltz, also Austrian, portraying Hans Lander, speaking Austrian German, and what may be different to standard or high German, aka Germany German. We're mainly gonna focus on Christoph Waltz speaking and not Diane Kruger, even though she's from Germany and also speaks standard German. I have studied German language studies at university, but I'm not a, like a thousand percent expert when it comes to Austrian German. I'm not. But I know a few things and I want to point them out because they are certainly different to standard German. The kind of German, high German also called, that people speak in Germany for the most part, when they don't speak a regiolect or a dialect, that is. Also worth noting, Austrian German isn't Austrian German per se. There are many different varieties of it. For instance, in Vienna, you speak a slightly different type of Austrian German, or you would verbalize certain words differently, sometimes use different words and terms all along. And Christoph Waltz is from Vienna, Wien, Austria. So keep that in mind. We're gonna start the video in drei, zwei, Eins, play. First sentence, first pause. But there is something that I immediately noticed and that is so, to my Germany German ears, so typical when it comes to Austrian German, which is the A instead of I diphthong pronunciation. In this case, Hans Lander, aka Christoph Waltz, says Fräulein. Fräulein. Lein. In Germany German, in standard or high German, you would rather say das Fräulein, I. Whereas in Austrian German, there's a tendency to pronounce the diphthong E, E, I, more like a A, Fräulein. This is a good example, so let's rewind this real quick. Fräulein von Hammersmark. Fräulein. Right? Sounds so happy and light. I love it. But no matter if you're from Germany or from Austria or another German-speaking country, the term das Fräulein, which is a minimized form of die Frau, singular, die Frauen, plural, it's an outdated term these days, you know, you don't use it anymore. Fräulein von Hammersmann. Oberstlander, es ist lange her. Schneidig wie eh und je. And there you may have noticed a difference. She said, schneidig wie eh und je. Schneidig wie eh und je. In Austrian German, it may rather sound like schneidig. The same diphthong, you know, spelled the same way, but pronounced differently. Schneidig wie eh und je. Also, was ist mit dem wunderschönen Bein geschehen? Also very typical when it comes to Austrian German, especially in contrast to standard German, is the S sound. For instance, in standard German, you would say sehr. You know, it's a soft, soothing S almost. Z, sehr. But in Austrian German, you would use sehr. You can hear that difference, especially in the also at the start of the sentence. Because in standard German, you would rather say also, like with a Z, also. But here he said also. Also, was ist mit dem wunderschönen Bein geschehen? Ich kenne zu viele von Ihren früheren Eroberungen, als dass ich in Ihren Honigtopf treten könnte. Na, im Ernst, was ist passiert? And that sounds so Austrian German. I love it. The sound of it, the flow of the language, you know. Na, im Ernst, was ist passiert? Na, im Ernst, was ist passiert? Once again, here it's the first term in the sentence that caught my attention because saying na is basically the Austrian German equivalent of saying nein in standard German. Na, im Ernst, was ist passiert? Sissi. Ja, ich habe mich, dummerweise muss ich eingestehen, im Bergsteigen versucht. <lacht> das ist das, was ich Bergsteigen? Dabei haben Sie bald verletzt beim Bergsteigen. <lacht> Also the way he said that, beim Bergsteigen. But what I want to talk about here, and that is also quite typical for Austrian German, 
Hum, instead of haben. Bergsteigen? Dabei haben sie bald verletzt. Bergsteigen? In standard German, people rather say haben with a B. E -N. But here it's HOM. Dabei haben Sie bald verletzt. Bergsteigen. Ob Sie es glauben oder nicht. <lacht> das Lachen. Vergeben Sie mir, gnädiges Fräulein. Ich wollte mich nicht über Ihr Unglück lustig machen. And by the way, many things that I'm mentioning here in this video do not only apply to Austrian German, but also to Southern German regiolects and dialects. For instance, in Bavaria, Bavarian German, you also have many of the same facets here and there. So keep that in mind. For instance, what I want to talk about here is something that you also may hear in Southern Germany, for instance, in Bavaria. In standard German, most people say lustig, but he said lustig. <sighs> Vergeben Sie mir, gnädiges Fräulein, ich wollte mich nicht über Ihr Unglück lustig machen. Es ist lustig. Also, to show you the difference once again, let's rewind a little bit to what she said at the beginning of the scene. Around here, I guess. Oberstlander, es ist lange her. Schneidig wie eh und je. Schneidig wie eh und je. Schneidig. That is the difference. It's the same suffix, ig. I -G. If he had said that line, it would rather sound like schneidig wie eh und je. Ich schneidig. Vergeben Sie mir, gnädiges Fräulein, ich wollte mich nicht über Ihr Unglück lustig machen. Es ist nur Bergsteigen. Jetzt bin ich aber neugierig. Was könnte Sie zu einem dermaßen tollen Gefangen getrieben haben? Once again, neugierig. IG, the ending, suffix, you know, fixed recurring ending. Whereas she would say neugierig. Da gibt es so frisch wie mein alter Onkel Gustav. Frisch. Wann haben Sie denn diesen Berg bestiegen gestern Nacht? Wann haben Sie denn diesen Berg bestiegen gestern Nacht? Also quite different to Standard German, haben's for haben Sie. In Standard German it would rather be, wann haben Sie denn diesen Berg bestiegen? Haben Sie. Instead of, wann haben Sie denn diesen Berg bestiegen? Wann Red haben Sie denn diesen Berg bestiegen gestern Nacht? Haben's. Scharfes Auge, Oberst. Es ist gestern Vormittag passiert. Und wo genau in Paris ist dieser Berg? Und wo genau in Paris ist dieser Berg? In Austrian German, you don't really verbalize the T all that much, if at all, at the end of ist. You know, in slang, spoken, standard German, you would also say that sometimes, you would also slur that a little bit, but you'd also say ist, you know, with the T pronounced. So that is also a slight difference. No, im Ernst, was ist passiert? Und wo genau in Paris ist dieser Berg? Nein. Ich mach doch nur Scherze. Gnädiges Fräulein, Sie kennen mich doch. Meine Scherze sind ein bisschen grob. Meine Scherze sind ein bisschen grob. Ein bisschen. Instead of ein bisschen. Also very typical for Austrian German. So it's a for ein. Ein bisschen. A bisschen. And bisschen. For bisschen. Ein bisschen. A bisschen. Gnädiges Fräulein, Sie kennen mich doch. Meine Scherze sind ein bisschen grob. So in this case, the standard German suffix chen, ein bisschen, turns to a suffix that is basically E -R -L. They both share the same grammatical function, if you will. They are a diminutive form, a minimizing form. Something little or small. Just a few. Ein bisschen. A bisschen. Brad Pitt. <laughs> ich mach doch nur Scherze. Gnädiges Fräulein, Sie kennen mich doch. Meine Scherze sind ein bisschen grob. Wer sind denn Ihre drei Fashionbegleiter? <laughs> oh, I love it. Wer sind denn Ihre drei Fashionbegleiter? For fesh, meaning net in the sense of friendly, or also maybe good looking, gut aussehend. Wer sind denn Ihre drei Fashionbegleiter? Wer sind denn Ihre drei Fashionbegleiter? Once again, the sharper S sound in sind. And I just love the term fesh. You know, it sounds old school, but in a good way. And also quite Austrian, if you ask me, fesh. If you learned something and you enjoyed this, Leave a like, subscribe for more, and share this video with others. That is a great help and support for content creators and YouTubers like me. And if you want to help me out even more, and if you enjoy my work on YouTube, feel free to support me on patreon.com slash definitely. That's also greatly, greatly appreciated and really makes a difference. And if you want to find out even more about the German language and culture, this channel is the perfect fit for you. I make videos about learning German with games, songs, that means Translated lyrics, for instance, movies, series, whatnot. And also, of course, with Inglorious Bastards and my two previous videos about this topic, which you can check out right here in the end card. Thanks for watching again. Highly appreciate it as always. And definitely see you next time. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal. 
Thanks.